So just a few months ago, Through Night released the TC20, which was their first 26650 based rechargeable flashlight. Now when it first came out, everybody seemed to be really excited about it because it was small, it was really compact, really bright, and just generally affordable. However, I wasn't all that interested simply because I don't particularly like 26650s. However, not long after that, Through Night announced this, the Catapult V6 which is essentially a 26650 based rechargeable update to the old Catapult line, which I really like. So I was pretty excited when this came out, and I got it on the pre-order. So I got about 20% off on the original price, so this was about 50 or $60 for me. And I purchased it with the intention of making a review a little bit earlier than everybody else, just so that I could uh, get some new reviewers to the channel and whatnot, but obviously that did not pan out. So. So I actually purchased this light directly from Thrunite because they had the 20% off deal. I don't think uh, shipping cost any extra money, but I did not buy it through Amazon like I usually do. Now as you can see, it ships in this plain cardboard box. This is pretty much just the standard Thrunite style cardboard box. It has this clear band sealing it. It opens quite easily. Inside you get this fairly poorly written thank you card from through night an instruction manual and this manual is quite detailed it comes in what four different languages lots of there's actually lots of good information on this one inside you get the light inside a holster it's quite neatly packed in there below that you have this bag full of accessories, a micro USB cable, and a silica packet. And that's all that there is inside the box. Now inside this accessory packet you have just a lanyard. And this is a pretty simple lanyard. This is actually very similar to the one that Nightcore uses on their lights. Um, a split ring for attaching this to the light. And I'll show you that a bit later. Then inside here you have a pair of O-rings a little rubber cover for the button and another rubber cover for the micro USB port. So this is the holster it comes with. It's actually a pretty nice holster. It doesn't have a whole lot of a whole lot going on. It's just a simple belt loop, D-ring, Velcro attachment. The light comes packed inside of this unnecessary plastic bag. So as for the build of this light, Obviously, like just about every other light in existence, this is made out of aircraft grade aluminum and the whole thing is type 3 hard anodized. Now, the body of the light is about 13 centimeters long. The diameter of the head is a, almost 6 centimeters at its widest point. And then in inches, it's about 5 inches long and a little over 2 inches across. So it's actually quite compact, especially considering how much power this thing has. Um, and it, it is pretty solidly built, it's quite heavy. Um, starting from the rear here, you can see there's no button, this is just a single button light. This has this anti-roll ring here, and then a small little area where you are supposed to be able to attach the small split ring in order to attach the lanyard which isn't my favorite system of attachment, but it does work pretty well. As you can see here on the battery tube, it has this sort of catapult signature style rhombus shape, like extra large journaling. It's quite, it's pretty unique and it does feel quite nice. I actually rather like it. Um, moving up, you can see the Through Night Catapult V6 engraving, serial number. Here you have the single stage digital button. This is just made entirely out of stainless steel, and there is a small LED in the center for indicating battery levels. On the rear, this is where the micro S, the micro USB port is. It has a small rubber flap, and it does seal pretty well, but it, it's not really the most durable. And then you can see the port in there. It's not the most well machined. There's there's a fair bit of open space around the actual USB port, but it doesn't have to be that precise simply because it has this rubber cover. And then in this area here, as you can see, it has this sort of anti-roll design, which is completely useless because the head is totally round. So this light rolls quite easily. 
And then moving up further, you can see there is a pair of large cooling fins. It's not the biggest heat sink system ever, but they are pretty thick and it does work fairly well. Um, this area up here, the widest point at the head is again completely round. It has this large non-crenulated stainless steel bezel. And then it has a really nice optical system. This I really like this. It has a very large piece of mineral crystal glass. And although this is very clear and very hard, this is not anti-reflective coated, which is disappointing. However, um, given my past experience with through night, I would probably expect the newer versions of this light to have an anti-reflective coated lens because they usually do. I just bought this. This is an early version. I, this was a pre-order. And for some reason, they tend not to put anti-reflective coating on the earlier versions of, this, of their lights, which is kind of annoying, but at least you could, if you buy one now, you could probably expect to have it. And then it has this very large, very smooth aluminum reflector. And the optics inside here are very clean, so obviously they've improved their assembly methods because there's no dust and stuff in there. Then the LED has a nice white surround, and the LED itself is a cool white. The pre-order version of this was only available in cool white. So this is a cool white. It's a quad die domeless Cree XHP35, I believe. Yes, that, that is what it is. And this is a very nice LED. Um, as for the internal construction, the light does ship with a battery included. This is a very large through night branded 5000 milliamp hour 26650. This is a protected button top cell. And when they ship it, it does have a cover on it to prevent accidental activation. The battery tube itself is pretty thick. It is anodized on the inside. It's a very smooth, clean anodization on the inside. However, what's really interesting is that only these threads up here at the head are actually anodized. These threads at the bottom are not anodized. They both have O-ring seals and they're both lubricated, but this one is not anodized, which is interesting. And then another interesting design is this has a non-threaded, non-anodized contact ring up here. And if you look at the head, you can see it has just a button top connector and a contact ring. These are both gold plated and this has electrical reverse polarity protection, which is generally better. And then on the rear here, you can see this has dual springs. So this has this large uncoated outer spring and a gold coated inner spring for electrical contact. And this system is really good for suspension. However, it is a bit of a disappointment, I think, that there is no spring in the head. It's just a button connector. So it doesn't have the greatest suspension for the battery on the inside. Now, what I think is interesting is, although at first I thought this design was kind of strange with only the front half being anodized, it seems they did this on purpose because since the spring is so stiff and there's not a lot of travel here, it's actually kind of difficult to thread this on and off while the battery is inside. So it seems to me like they intended for you to disassemble the light by unscrewing the head, not the tail, which would make sense, especially because if you're not actually really supposed to unscrew this all that often, you wouldn't want an extra system that could potentially cut off and, and turn the light off if it was anodized. So I think it's actually pretty um, interesting and I like, the, I, I like the fact that these threads here are not anodized. As usual, the threads are square cut and they are quite nice, however, the tolerances are just all right. They're really not that great. So overall, I think the build of this light is really good. It's really nice and solidly built, very compact. All of the machining is very precise. It's not like a super high precision machining job or anything, but it is, it is definitely a nicer built flashlight. And in my testing, it's very well sealed against water and dust and all of these different things, even though it has this seemingly flimsy little cover over the micro USB port, and I don't usually trust these a whole lot, it has turned out to actually be quite well sealed against water. So that's good. Of course, being hard anodized, it's very scratch resistant. However, I wouldn't really trust this if I were to drop it on like concrete or something, which I have accidentally done with some of my other lights. 
as you can see here, Through Knight does claim that it will be able to handle an impact of up to a meter and a half in height. Um, however, I would not want to test that simply because it has this huge um, lens and these are pretty prone to cracking, so I would be very careful. Um, and then as far as like the actual feel in the hand, it's a little top heavy because the head is so big and I feel like it's just a bit short to really be comfortable, but overall it's very nice. So the user interface on this light is simple and intuitive. This is actually the same interface that Theranet uses on pretty much all of their single button lights. So this allows you to access pretty much all modes um, from on or off with just a single button and it works quite well. When the light is off, if you press the button, it will simply turn the light on and this will turn it on to one of the three main modes. It has bone memory for these. So I just keep it on low. But while the light is on, if you press and hold, it'll cycle through the three main modes. So this is low, medium, and high. And if it's on low and you cycle it up to medium, and then you wait for about four seconds, I believe it is, and then you press and hold, it'll actually step it back down to low instead of going up to high, so that's quite nice. And if you press and hold and just continue to hold, it'll just cycle through these forever. Um, if you let go and then press and hold, of course, it'll just cycle back. When the light is off, if you press and hold, it'll bring you straight to firefly mode. If either when the light is on or off, if you double tap, it'll bring you to turbo mode. So if it's on low, like, or medium high or whatever, and you double tap, you'll get turbo. If it's off, you'll get turbo, firefly. While the light is on turbo, if you, if you double tap again, you'll get strobe. And strobe can only be accessed from turbo, so you have to double tap, then double tap. Um, which isn't the greatest way to get to strobe, but strobe is not also is also not the most useful mode on Earth, so it works out just fine. So as for the actual levels in the mode, Firefly mode is about half a lumen, and this will run for about 41 days is what they claim. Low mode is about 22 lumens, and this will run for about 62 hours, or a little over two and a half days. Medium is 180 lumens, and this will go for about 9 hours. High is 950 lumens, and this will run for 165 minutes, or about just under two, 3 hours. Turbo is 1700 lumens, and this will run for 150 minutes. And then strobe is 1200 lumens. Um, as for the actual uh, battery performance over runtime of this light, um, all of the modes are current controlled so you'll get a nice flat um, output level, except for turbo. Turbo, you'll only get 1700 lumens for about the first two minutes, and then it'll step it down to high, and that'll run smoothly for the duration of the runtime. So, um, effectively speaking, this is really a 950 lumen flashlight, not a 1700 lumen flashlight. It just can hit 1700 lumens briefly, so keep that in mind. Although the difference between 950 and 1700 lumens is not that big a deal. It's not quite a 200% increase. It's, it's definitely a noticeable, noticeable increase, but you can't expect to be using 1700 lumens for an extended period of time with this light. As you can see on the side of the light here, there is a LED indicator in the button. And when the light is on to any of the normal modes, this will flash blue if the battery level is from 21 to 100%. So this is about 3.3 to 3.4 volts is what they say. And that's a pretty big range. That's most of the runtime of this light. It'll be blue. Uh, once the battery percentage drops down to about 11 to 20%, it'll turn red. And then um, from 1 to 10%, it'll start flashing. And then when it's dead, it will be dead. So it's nice that they give you this indicator, but it's it doesn't give you a whole lot of range. By the time it turns red, you're already very low on battery. Um, one thing that is nice about this, though, is that because it's a blue light, it does not turn on when you are in firefly mode. So that not only helps to save battery, but it also prevents this light from um, being even brighter than your half-lumen mode here. This is a rechargeable flashlight. So this has a fairly sophisticated charging circuit built into the light. Um, this will charge at 2 amp current for the first 2 hours of charging. So if your battery is pretty much dead and you start to charge this from the micro USB port, 
within about two hours you'll have about 80 percent charge or 4000 milliamp hours so that's quite a nice charge and since um, this 26650 is so big it can definitely handle that much current as for the actual process of charging it just charges from a micro USB so anything that will supply that source will be just fine um, when you plug the light in this little light here on the side will be red when charging when it's done charging it will turn blue but for the duration of the charge time it will be red and if you actually turn it on you can use this light while charging you'll only get low medium and firefly modes but you still can use it um, so that's pretty nice and then if there's something wrong like say you lose connection or something it will flash purple to let you know that it is not charging correctly so if say you accidentally twist this a little bit it'll let you know that you're not charging um, and for those of you who are wondering you cannot operate this without a battery it does not work so the charging on this guy is pretty simple but very effective and it does work quite well so as far as heat management on this light um, like I said the heat sink isn't very big it, it really could be bigger and it doesn't do the greatest job of dissipating heat so when you're on turbo it builds up heat quite fast you'll be able to feel it within just a few seconds I can already feel it building up um, of course this light does contain an intelligent temperature control circuit and that is part of what gives you such a short run time on turbo mode you only get 1700 lumens for the first two minutes of your runtime, but if you turn the light off and let it cool down and then turn it back onto turbo It will bump all the way back up to 1700 lumens again So it's not like you only get that for two minutes. It is has a lot to do with the heat management as well um, And in medium and high modes the heat management does work pretty well It's just turbo I think is a little too much for this light Three Knight claims that the working voltage of this light is from 2.75 volts to 4.2 volts, meaning that the light will turn off when the battery hits 2.75 volts. Um, however, I've seen online that some, I haven't tested this myself, but some people are saying that the light does actually shuts off much earlier at about uh, 3.25, 3.26 volts. So it's probably a good thing it prevents over discharge on your battery, but it won't last quite as long as they're saying it is. However, because this is a rechargeable light, I don't think anybody will really ever have to worry about running it down that low. So as for the beam profile of this light, obviously this is intended to be a more throwy light, so it's intended to reach out further. So on this desk here, you're gonna it does look kind of strange. Um, if I just drop it a mode, the, it's kind of washing the camera out. You can see it kind of has this big hole in it. This is only within the first, I don't know, about a foot and a half from the front of this light. It's This is not at all an issue at any kind of distance, so this is just an effect of it being so close to the table I'm using it on. But as far as the beam profile goes, I really like this beam profile, especially for a throwy light. It has a really nice defined hotspot with just a little bit of a corona. And then it has this nice wide spill. And this is a really good actual like um, light ratio. It's, it's a very concentrated hotspot, but there's still enough in the spill for it to be useful. And this spill is very smooth. There's no artifacts in this beam. It looks very nice. And then you can see it has a very faint periphery, so it's not wasting much of this light. And as far as the tint goes, it's a very nice pretty neutral tint even though this is a cool white LED this is actually quite a neutral tint um, the hot spot is just a tiny bit more green on the corona and a little tiny bit yellow in the center and then there's a bit more of a magenta tint in the spill but it's a very it's a very subtle thing and it's it's much more obvious up close and on camera than it is in use um, so overall, I really like the beam profile on this flashlight. Um, one thing that I also really like is when you put it on moonlight mode and then you turn it off, it's that really nice fade out on this LED, which doesn't have any practical use. It just looks really cool. And it also does 
have a really nice fade in and out between the different modes, so that's very nice as well. Again, not useful, I just like it. And because this is such a concentrated light, uh, on the spec sheet, Through Night is saying that this is putting out a really high concentration of 140,650 candela, which in practical terms means, or at least according to Through Night, means it's going to be throwing for about 750 meters. And um, if I do night shots in this video, I'll show you, but this really does throw quite a lot. It's actually very impressive, especially considering the relatively small size of this light. So this is a really good thrower. A lot of people suggested that I should do beam shots at night in my other videos, um, and I didn't want to do this simply because the camera really can't pick up what the human eye can, it just doesn't look the same on video. However, I decided to do it for this light because it really does have a pretty dramatic beam pattern, and I kind of wanted to show that. Um, so right now I have the camera set up f with a pretty high exposure, the ISO is at like 3200, um, and this is just kind of trying my best to mimic what it actually looks like to me, but it, it still doesn't look quite the same. Anyway, this is the Through Night Catapult V6. And uh, so starting off, this is Firefly MO. This is about half a lumen, and as you can see, this is very faint. Um, this is very useful for when it actually is like completely pitch black, and as you can see, even at half a lumen, this thing's got quite a bit of range. That's my house over there at like, I don't know, 40, 50 feet away. It's a shed on the right. And as you can see, even at such a low lumen level, this does have quite a bit of throw. And it is brighter in person than even it is on camera. And as you can see, up close it does have that ring effect, but it disappears at a distance. So, jumping up. This is 22 lumens, and it illuminates spotlight style my house very well. You can see that recycling bin all over there, shed on the right, tree. And this does have a fair bit of spill. The spill isn't quite yet visible on camera, but in person it's very nice and does have a pretty wide angle of view. And at 22 lumens, this is actually pretty impressive. It illuminates very nicely, and this still has quite a bit of range. So jumping up. This is medium, this is 180 lumens, and now you can really see that spill. You can see what a wide angle that spill has. This illuminates a lot. It's very nice, and even the spill at this point is bright enough that it gets all the way out to that shed over there. Um, the hot spot is very bright. It's, it's like a spotlight. It illuminates things very intensely. Let's see, it's, it's just very impressive. It illuminates that fence and recycling bin over there. And I can actually see above that fence and over into some trees that are quite a ways back there. Not really visible on camera, but in person this is pretty impressive. Uh, jumping up one more mode. Sorry, it jumps down. This is high, and as you can see this is very bright. This is 950 lumens and it just completely illuminates the backyard. It's just, it's very impressive. It's a very concentrated hot spot, a lot of range. It clearly illuminates those trees all the way over there. And in fact, it's wash. It's starting to wash out the camera um, at this at this close range here. So this is very impressive, and again, it really shows how nice that spill is. And just turning it off, turning it back on, and then jumping all the way up to 1,700 lumens. Um, not as big of a deal on camera, but in person, this is really impressive. This is just super bright. You can see that spill is just. Even that spill is just super bright, and the concentration on the hotspot is really impressive. Just take a look for yourself and just see how crazy this thing is. I'm sure everybody's annoyed right now, but this thing is just awesome. And maybe I can even show you. It's like a searchlight in the sky. This thing is just insane. This is at maximum brightness, and it's it's starting to get really hot in my hand, but just look at that. That's very, very impressive. So that's actually pretty much it for this review. That's about everything there is to talk about this light. Um, overall, I really like this light. I think it's coming in at a really good price. This retails for like $75, I think. Um, of course, I did get it on the pre-order, so I got 20% off. However, I believe Through Night 
does have an ongoing promotion right now. It, I don't know, it may have just ended, but they were offering 20% off on this light recently as well for the neutral white version. Um, of course, I would always recommend the neutral white version because neutral white is just better, but the cool white is obviously still very good as well. Um, as for who I would recommend this light for, uh, to be totally honest, I'm not really sure. I guess just someone who really likes, who really wants a very concentrated light for a fair price, because this is well priced. And of course, it is built very well, very high quality, all of that good stuff. Being a rechargeable light, I think this is really good if you don't already have a bunch of other flashlights and a charger for it, because this charges itself quite nicely. Um, if I were to recommend this to anybody, it'd probably be uh, a backpacking slash camping light or a car light. Uh, especially because you can just kind of stick this somewhere and forget about it because you don't have to worry about charging it. Um, overall though, um, I like it quite a lot and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who is considering it. Um, of course I will put a link in the description to this light. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to say, so yeah, that's it. That's the end of my review. If you like this video, be sure to like it, subscribe, share it, all of that good stuff. If you didn't like it, then you can post hate down in the comments. I don't really care. And I will see you in the next video.